And then I press the wrong button. And then I press the wrong button. Yeah, that just happened. Yep. I might have stopped the stream. <laughs> press the right button this time. I pressed the stop. Rec I, I pressed. All right. Stop I should, we should be good now. Okay. So this thing, back to us. Round two. Let's get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ding ding. Things happen. I actually pressed the. I pressed the recording button. And I'm like, shoot, that wasn't supposed to start that, I uh, pressed that button. Then I pressed the recording button, <laughs> didn't realize I pressed the recording button before I pressed the start button. I stopped the stream, like a jackass. But anyways, um, thank you for all for joining for the day. For those, uh, those who are here, new here, this is the Bear Thoughts podcast on YouTube and on Twitch. We are live right now uh, on Twitch.tv forward slash Bear Thoughts. If you ever want to join us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And I'm joined by the day uh, as my usual, my co-host, I don't want to say it correctly. Uh, Corvo Ninja. No, there you go. Two streams in a row, man. I'm gonna have to send you a box of cookies. I seriously was about to say uh, about to say Corona again because like my brain just my brain's <laughs> so out of it today. You know, here's, okay. here's how how my my brain has been like my brain's been so out of it. My my wife was uh, go getting a mail today, and I got mail in. I got a little excited, and I got excited. Cause my 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 wife told me that I got mail from Jehovah Witnesses, and they call me Mrs. and then my name. I was like, "Oh, that's great! Give it to me." She's like, "Nope, ripping it up in front of me." I'm like, "What are you throwing away? That content? Give it to me! I want to read it, <laughs> Mrs. Hell yeah, let's get it! I don't want to. I want to see what these people are trying to get. To. <laughs> the first time I've ever like okay, the first time that I was in my own place. I had a Joe Witness knock. I don't know if I told this story before. The Joe Witness knocked on my door. It was a lady, younger lady, not as, as not as a young as myself, but she was uh, with her within her maybe late or early forties, maybe late thirties. Knocks on my door, and she was a Joe Witness. And of course, you know, being that I used to be one, I opened the door, not shy one bit, going, "Hello, how you doing today?" And then she goes through her usual spill. I'm like, "Okay, question for you. Do you believe in Jesus?" It's like, "Yeah." Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Uh-huh. I'm like, no, they're not. Not to your witness. Yes, they are. When I was a kid, all growing up, my dad told me Jesus was just a big prophet. That's all he was, a prophet, not a little Savior. And I don't know it's a bit of a thing, but I, was, I thought that shit was hilarious because she walked away from my door like dumbfounded because she's like, I didn't know this. I'm like, ha-ha, I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I was, I'm sorry, yeah. I got excited about it because I, I, I never knew that Joe would just sent you paper in, 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 the, in, the, in the mailbox trying to recruit people. That's how they're going to get you. No longer knock at your door. They're going to send you mail. I'm like, I was excited about it. My brain was just popping off about that. Of course, uh, yeah. the day was big old fun too. So let's go about that with a little air. Yeah, I got, I, we have something similar like that because, you know, uh, we have someone in the house that grew up in that, in that air, in that, type of a environment so and we still live in the area that that same kingdom hall services and they still come knock on our door knowing there's someone here that knows everything they're about to say pull it in front of the and door I, going try it <laughs> I, get, I get i get i get tickled a little bit especially oh. if uh, if she answers the door before I do, because their face is just like, oh crap, we come to the house to come here again. When are y'all gonna mark this address down so we don't keep coming back? She comes open the door with, with devil horns on. <laughs> Hello, welcome to hell. <laughs> oh, Pitchfork in hand. Oh, Pay goodness. no attention to the screams in the background. It's just my <laughs> husband. <laughs> oh, we're having uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sensual sarcasm. <laughs> anyway, we're having <laughs> we're having a sensual conversation. Yes, there we go. So the civil, civil. Yes, very civil. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> man, I just my my week has been all kind of everywhere for you. Um, how is your week going so far for you? You, you work going good for you? Is everything going? I don't know how much you can tell in details about your job. Uh, hmm. uh, well, I'm going to put it like this. It 
it it has been trying the past two weeks. Um, no one individual is to blame. It's more like there's a whole lot happening all at one time, and it just decided to happen right at the holiday season. Uh huh. Which for people in my profession kind of sucks because most of the people you would need to interact with are leaving during this time of the season to go somewhere else. They're so f- instead of having three or four days to take care of an issue, you've got like an hour. <laughs> okay, so a lot of them are traveling, I would assume. A lot yeah. of them are going to other places. You know, one thing yeah. I, I really need to get, maybe not, I don't know how much you can convulge. I really need a retelling of that one person decide to call up one of your other representatives and hit while she was uh uh disposed of or in in a in a predicament while he was calling her up and and yeah. chewing her mm-hmm. out and giving and then his uh affirmation punishment afterwards that story was great i don't know when you when you could divulge that but someday uh best you could without divulging without getting yourself in trouble um, for those who right. are from the from his work, thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. And you want to come by the tra- stream, please be my guest. Um, but yeah, that story was so. That's so, of course. Yeah, I was so... I was still wanting to know what he said, but I don't even know if that's even safe for Twitch. I, it's I it's not, dude. <laughs> it is not. If if Juicy. they were gonna put like uh, uh, if they were gonna put su- if they were gonna give us uh, subtitles. For what he said, there would be a whole lot of special characters. Oh, goodness gracious. I even would have to make up some for uh, some of the more provocative things. But, I will uh, stick it in your... Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> something, something like that. Oh, yeah. goodness gracious. I, but that story was yep. so good. Of course, uh, Stealthy's... I still think like that's one of your best stories. Stealthy's one of her best stories is still the... Uh, I got the good... Um, driver guy the, the 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 uber which i actually tried to get into uber i found out that the, what you had to do to get into uber i'm like yeah i'm not doing that that's too much take a picture of it you gotta wait two weeks you gotta get approved and you gotta your car has to be t- has to be uh, uh uh not just clean but detailed and it has to be four doors you can't have suicide or like my truck like i have a you know you open the front two doors you know, then you open the two back you can't just open all at the same time i'm like i rather just drive my truck like yes yeah, a little bit worse on gas but at least it looks nice and but like nope has to be four doors and i'm like the pt looks like really our pt yeah. has been in we bought it from a used lot, but we bought it from I forget that really big name uh, used car dealership here. Somebody can CarMax. There you go, CarMax. We bought it from CarMax. CarMax. And it was it was a rental car before us, right? And they got it got in a wreck. And then they got it. To, they got it. Then they fixed it up. Then we bought it from them. And then one day, okay, just for a little story here. One day we were coming off one of the uh, interstate. We we're coming onto a road that the road was literally three, no, four lanes to get to us, four lanes, okay? They came from the parking lot, drove directly across all three lanes into the fourth where we were and sideswiped us. We got the car fixed off of that. We couldn't open the door, got the car fixed. And then a couple of months later, a deer decided to come running in front of us when we were about to pay off the PT. We were so close to paying off the, this PT. We were like, fix it whenever you can. We need this car because it's literally about to be paid off and we're the only vehicle we have paid off. And they they fix it up and they they went apart. They used chicken wire to fix it. <laughs> redneck, redneck, in the, you know, uh, uh, what's the word for engineering? It? Engineering, yeah. It works. It still drives to this day. It's just that thing's been to hell and back. So it's like it's not one of those things like we just don't want to take care of the car anymore. It's like just this scene is pretty much a working mule. We don't care at this point. It gets us A to B. It gets us money, and it is knock on wood has not broken on us. Uh, since then, so uh, yay for used car dealerships, and of course, it's a PT loser, as everybody uh innately names it because it's a PT cruiser. Because I don't know, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about that, I guess, because the way it looks is called a PT loser. Uh, so they modeled the PT cruiser after a different uh sports car that was made by uh Chrysler, uh huh, and um. Because they modeled the front end after it, but they made it basically a mom car. <laughs> Everybody's like, you took this sexy front end of this nice sports car and you stuck it on a mom car, so now it's the PT loser. 
Yeah. Mm. I would kind of agree with that. My wife still loves it, though. I, if I, I always said if I ever came into good money, I would just, like, either just buy her, you know, a new vehicle. Or I would always get her to get that car detailed and properly fixed because she actually loves that car um, for whatever reason. I can take it or leave it. I like yeah. my Toyota well, truck. Well, it's like I love my – the Jeep that, that, that Jasmine hooked me up with this year. Yeah. Dude, I love my Jeep. I love my Jeep. What was what was going on? Like, I, I remember sending her the text with the, the, the thumbnail. Um, thumbs up for anybody who was paying attention to the thumbnail. Took me a long time to make that. Quite proud of myself. Uh, but as soon as I texted her, she said you were working on the top or the hood of yeah, your- yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that Jasmine agreed to do when she decided that she figured out a way for me to get my Jeep was I always wanted a soft top on my Jeep. Not a hard top because I like, I want the ability to take the soft top off and chill and ride around no top. Is there removed doors as well? Well, yeah, I can remove the doors. I even bought tube doors that can go on in their place, uh-huh. you know, metal tube doors. Yeah. But she, we ordered all the parts in stages due to budget, you know, for the soft top. And the last part had come in. Five head. And we were literally outside in the dark putting the soft top on the Jeep. Now, if anybody doesn't know this, let me clue you in on something. You put a soft top on the Jeep in the day because you're supposed to lay the top out so that the sun will heat it up and make the material more pliable. Did it crack? No, it was, dude, it is extremely stiff and hard to to manage. But hours later, we did manage to get it on there. Uh, A friend of mine showed up right towards the end when all we all we really had left to do was to put the back window in the very back and put the little tailgate bar in there so that when the tailgate shuts it seals yeah i want you to know one of the most difficult things in the world to do is to get the tailgate bar on this jeep the first time with a soft top because they don't really tell you everything you need to know and if you're like me when I took the tailgate bar out of the box, yeah, nothing else, nothing else came out with it. <clears throat> so I'm assuming I have the bar. This is what I need. Hours later, my buddy goes over to the box, picks it up, shakes it. Nothing comes out. Slams it on the ground and a box of brackets slide out. Ah. Um, <laughs> you got to have the brackets to put the bar on there, dummy. Oh. So it, yeah, it was it was quite an ordeal, but I will tell you, since then, it's been in the parking lot a few times. It's heated up. We've been able to slowly get it stretched out like it needs to be, so we're, we're looking good now, and it looks really, really nice with the soft top on it. Okay, so, like, you were, you were ha- having so much difficulty putting this thing on. Your friend literally bought you some food afterwards. Like, yes, somebody, told yes. me, somebody told me that, I'm like, what kind of? I want a friend like that. Hey, yeah, I see you having a really yeah. hard time. Let me go ahead and buy Not, you food. Huh? Yeah. Well, see, there's there's a kind of a give and take with, with this particular friend. Like, um, for instance, when we go in December, he's going with us. We bought his ticket and he in his room. Um in his room? And and his room. Scoot over, so, get, get out the porn, get out the video games, let me buy you something real quick. And yeah, he uh he, so we do a lot of give and take. I will buy him something expensive because he's that good of a friend. And then three months later, three months later, he'll catch me eyeing something and I'll turn my back and he'll slide it over there and pay for it. (laughs) And I'll get it. I'll randomly get in the car. He'll flap it in my chest. I'm like, you're a dick. (laughs) I saw you looking at those two jiggly things. I bought them for you. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that, you know, but it's good to have friends like that. It's really good because it's, it just shows that um, they care, you know, and it's not all about what can you do for me. It's, uh, you know, I want to help. I want to hook you up too. And like, we got through with that tailgate bar. And he's like, y'all just want to run, go grab some food. And I'm like, dude, it's kind of not in the budget. We're kind of holding things tight so we can have a really good time in December. And when I say really good. I mean, really good. Well, um, this time you won't have uh, a third wheel. 
You may and say. And then he goes, then he looks at me, he goes, I didn't, wasn't talking about your budget. <laughs> I'm talking about my budget. How is it? Okay. I know which one which gentleman you're talking about here, rollover. Um, if, yeah. if, you, hope, if you watch this video, I'm sorry. Your name, roll over to me. Um, so, okay. As far as understanding, the gentleman comes over to your house a lot. You all do. You play a lot of Destiny together. Hope you're enjoying Destiny 2. Uh, right yep. now, my wife is currently playing the Hyrule Warriors that I've been playing a lot of right now. Um, so, how, what is he doing nowadays? Like, is he, is, I don't think he's working with Stealthy, right? He's doing his own thing. What is he doing nowadays? He works, he works for my family at my family's uh, pizza restaurant. Pizza restaurant? Oh, yeah. I didn't know you had a pizza restaurant. A little more information here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. My my uh my cousin and uh his best friend, uh, they're co owners to a pizza restaurant that they started up here down in uh in a town a little south from us about three years ago. Yeah. And uh they have been uh they've been raking in money, man. They've been making a lot of money because they make really, really good pizza. Yeah. And uh, that's due to the fact they worked in the pizza industry in Atlanta for some of those smaller mom and pop places that were really popular for good like pizza for 10 years. Okay. And then they brought all that then they brought all that skill and knowledge down here and opened up this place and they're about to break ground for a second store here in Thomasville where I live. Well, okay. Just just say, you know, you don't have to. Just saying, if you want to pass them on the idea of maybe a Philly cheesesteak pizza that I made, that I had a recipe for, if they want to try it out, all I ask is a, a, a small little shout out. Just put my name underneath there somewhere, the small bracket, you know. Uh, we call we we we'll call the we'll call it the grumpy pizza. Grumpy pizza, yeah, something, cause like it's it was good. Like seriously, you don't think like Philly cheesesteak sandwiches are usually just bread? And sandwich it between it. Well, you can literally, if you want to, you can take the pizza, fold that thing in half, like, you know, some New Yorker pizza so big, you fold that thing in half and just shove down your mouth. It's pretty much a Philly, Philly cheesesteak sandwich at that point. It was yeah. so good. Mayonnaise, I know it sounds weird. Get a pizza crust, put mayonnaise on it, uh, and then pour, of course, little onions, bell peppers, and uh, thin strips of, um, of uh, beef. You know, and put some seasoning on it, but your very the choices and mozzarella or is it mozzarella? Um, it might have been Parmesan. I might have to look it again because uh, I had the recipe on my Discord. I'm used to, never mind. Don't have it no more. <laughs> Gotta look relook it up. But yeah, the the cheese you normally use on there, or if you want to try cheddar, or, or you know, I'm gonna try that version of a, a Philly cheese uh, Philly cheese steak sandwich variation. You could do cheddar. Uh, it was so good. And you don't think, like, mayonnaise, well, yeah, you, you just not like you're going full on, let's make a layer of mayonnaise. It's literally like pizza sauce. You spread it on thin and get it across it and then and then put everything on top of it. You won't very much notice it very much, but that's just one of the things they put in uh, Philly cheesesteak uh, sandwiches. Yep. And, of course, if you don't like onions, well, eat me. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, tired. I can, uh, I, 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 would definitely bring that up to them because uh, that is something that has actually popped in my mind a couple of times since the pizza cast. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, I got to remember to ask Grumpy if he cares if I share that with them. No, go ahead, you know? share it. I, I, I'm not going to be opening up no pizzeria. And all you know. But yeah, yeah, they're fixing to open their second store, dude. And they I, like, especially right let now. Me like, let me put it like this. I think. Rollover told me the other day rollover? that in the oh, yeah, yeah rollover <laughs> in the first in the first four hours uh, they cleared three grand profit. Drop. My jaw just did. Yeah. Damn. Um, and that's just on bread, really. Like you think of like okay, if everybody here for home, we're like you not catch one on pizza streams. You should, should you should try catch it at least one time. Um, but. Really, pizza isn't really a very expensive thing. Like, yeah, it's okay. That's that's the thing about about America uh, with our, a lot of our our our, our fattening foods. The stuff to make those fattening foods aren't very expensive, and not really that hard to make. You can make it with your hand if you want to. 
I definitely suggest getting a KitchenAid if you want to make pizza dough, but it's really, like, not hard. So was, when, I, when I hear people go, oh, you want to order some pizza? I'm back in my mind going, I can literally make that exact pizza for half the price and still yeah. taste um, just as good. Yeah, and see, around our house, it, if I want what I consider to be the best pizza, I wait for Jasmine to have a good day. Because then she'll make me pizza. That um, is sad. And she, make me pizza. <laughs> and she makes and she makes the dough from scratch by hand. Um, and it and it's great. Now, close second is my cousin's restaurant. If Jasmine's not in the mood to make pizza, <laughs> I'm call, I'm, I'm phoning it in. It's, still, you know? it's pretty much still handmade. They just you know, it's yeah, not. I mean really- they. they they hand make it. I mean, the only difference is is that they have a really giant dough making mixer. Yeah. To you know, oh my God, rolling that freaking dough bowl that that dough bowl over just to get the dough out. And it's like you got to have some arms, bro. Well, I do, okay. And for, then for anybody here that doesn't want to understand, uh, take a lot of a lot of okay. There's the difference between bread flour and 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 pretty much pizza flour or, or, or un, unbleached flours that we use it. Uh, and if you want to make thin crust pizza, as soon as you make the bread, uh, bread, the bread for the, or the dough for the pizza, start spreading it out, put it on a pan, put it in the oven. Thin crust right there. Fairly easy. But if you want to think, you got to let that shit rise. I can already imagine if it's as big as what you're saying here, how big would it be when it rises? And see, that's the trick. As soon as they get through getting it all mixed up, they've got to get that out, and then somebody has to start separating those balls out. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like so, spreading like Play-Doh? Yeah, well, they, they basically have a cutter, and they cut out pizza balls. Oh, and they, okay, that's cool. You know, dough balls, dough balls to the side, and they let those dough balls rise. And then they have dough balls for a while to just slap out pizza, and then, you know, you get down to so many, and then they're like, all right, start up another batch of dough, you know? Well, I'm sure no one here would be too surprised, but I used to work at a Domino's for a very short period of time. I'll get the story of that a little later. Um, and when we were making pizza there, we literally, our pizza dough was right out of, already made, pre, pre-cut, pre pre-sized, pre-done, pull up the refrigerator, let it thaw out, and there we go. There's your pizza dough right there. And our cheeses and our pepperoni and everything were a little packaged. We put them in little containers. We pulled from there. And then we needed, we didn't, none of it was, well, none of it was eat fresh. Let me just say like that. So you telling me if these people were literally pulling everything from scratch, that's just. Yes, yes. They're, they're, cutting, they're cutting bell peppers. They're cutting olives. Uh, they they pride themselves on if you can think about having it on a pizza, we can put it on a pizza. Like, uh, my cousin's wife likes broccoli on uh-huh. the pizza. That, I mean, they have broccoli. They have everything is cut every morning and staged every morning fresh. They use it and they start getting low. Somebody goes back there, gets the next set ready. So you, you know, have a prep person this, and this, then you have the the line people and then you have the. The cashier, I'd imagine. Well, yeah. So what they have is they have a dishwasher, they have a register, they have floor girls, and then they have a a uh, a slice and a pie guy. Okay. And no, no prep. Or is this uh, just the, the, they do two the jobs? prep is the prep is done either by slice or uh yeah yeah usually a slice. Okay. So what they do is they come in and prep it, get everything ready, and then the reason they have slice and pie is because the guy that does pie, all he does is the pies. Which the guy that does slice may do a slice, just an individual slice, and he may do slice? the sub. Yeah, they sell single slice pizza slices, like you know those big old slices you get from from uh, those mom and pop places, you know, the ones that are big as your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they do single slices like that. They have, uh, they do sub sandwiches. They do hot wings, all that stuff. I seriously thought it was just a, a, um, just like a once big slice from a pizza pre-made and they just, shh, shh, here's your slice. Not like just can't take the dough and then spreading it out to a pizza slice and, 
uh, which I would imagine if they've not sp- spread out perfectly, they will cut the tooth to shape and then fold the, yeah. the, 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 the crusts into the shape to stuff it if they have the stuff. And then that sounds like, well, yeah, I guess that makes sense because if you don't have a big enough oven to do a big enough pizza to make the big slices coming from that. So, yeah, maybe well, that's the case. Here's, here's the other side of it. How do you know what, what slices or what full pies to make to make the slices? So you're going to make a full, full pie of pepperoni and maybe only sell two pepperoni slices out of that pie that day? Sure. So instead of wasting, instead of wasting their, their, you know, their resources, they're like, okay, so we'll make us a pie crust out and then as we go along, we'll, make a, we'll slice out a slice-sized piece Make it up, throw it in the throw it in the oven, pull it out, hand it off, and they they do that all day. So okay, look at my screen. Something like I would imagine something like maybe this. Sorry, I haven't cut up your side like that. Yeah, something kind of like that. Yeah, like that's pretty much a well for these images. Pretty much those are pizzas themselves. Just I mean they they don't make them quite as large as some of these. But, I mean, they're like, you don't pick it up with one hand. You better have both hands, you know? <laughs> yeah. And double it's, fist it's, it. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're good. And um, I, I don't know what else to say See, other than, man. That, that right there, that would be a good example to make a Philly cheesesteak pizza. Because yeah. you don't know how many are going to sell that. You don't want to make a full-size pizza because maybe not everybody would like it. And you can have a single serving of a Philly cheesesteak pizza, which would be just like a kind of like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich, but just pizza style. Yeah, well, you know, what they did as they made, because they have some pizzas that aren't what you would call standard pizzas that they sell a lot of, but the way they did it is they co- as they come up with the ideas, they would make like one or two individual slices of them. Yeah. And put them up in the little serving window where people could see them with a little tag saying what they were. And people, some people would buy them and they loved them. And then some ideas they hated. The ones they hated, they scrapped. The ones that they loved, they started putting them on the menu. You can get full pies, slices, whatever. And that's how they grew their menu. Well, yeah, because you would like Taco Bell. Just, just keep them throwing stuff at the freaking menu and do something stuck. I swear, it's like it's there. There's something new on that dang menu uh, list every every week with Taco Bell. I don't go there as nearly as much as I used to, but goodness gracious! I don't want to talk about Taco Bell. I still have a sore <laughs> spot from them for them because uh, when I was a kid, one of my favorite foods was on their menu, uh-huh. and they pulled it, and it's never come back, and I'm still pissed off. <laughs> Oh, my, my middle brother, because uh, we used to love going to Taco Bell. Every time my, my father would get us, it was one of the few things he would actually treat us to. He would bring us to Taco Bell quite a few, quite often. And every time we would go there, and we'd get our, we'd get, we all would get all uh, soft tacos. We all love the soft tacos. And my middle brother, he would have had, like, remember, he was a very angry child. But the moment he saw or even tasted lettuce on his taco, he flipped his sh- I mean, he would start screaming, yelling, getting angry. Like, he would, he would demand us to go back. And, and it was like, it's just lettuce. Just pick it off. How do you taste it anyways? It tastes horrible. I'm like, I can't taste it. I like the crunch of it. That's like, that's, it's a textural thing to me. It's not a flavor thing. It's a textural thing for me. I don't right. taste the, the lettuce. But he's like, it tastes like grass. I'm like, how you taste it? What are you, guru? See, see and for me, that's that's kind of a... It's hard for me because I like the way lettuce tastes. Like water. <laughs> but but my stomach, medically, can't do it. Can't have lettuce. What? Yeah. Medically, lettuce. I cannot have lettuce. Yes. Lettuce. Lettuce, le- lettuce will make me go to the bathroom so much I will dehydrate. Is it is it like is it the like maybe the chemicals that they put on the lettuce that maybe like will I, 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 I've contribute? Tried, I've tried I've tried lettuce from the store. I've tried lettuce grown in a garden by my grandfather. I mean, I've tried all kind of lettuce, but basically I don't have to buy laxative. If I really want to get clean, I just eat me a taco with some lettuce in it, bro, um, and I'm done for the day. My my wife is thinking about maybe giving me some that laxative cuz uh well, my I'm okay. 
I barely drink any sodas. We barely ever go out to fast food. I cut pretty much brown beef out of my diet primarily all together, other than when we have a pizza, which is pepperoni. But like that's that's still far between. At this point, I don't really think it's 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 my dietary. I think it's a lot of water weight. And then she's like, well, it could also be your 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 colon or something like that. Or like, you know, it needs to, it needs to be cleansed out one time to, to let it clear through and whatever. And like, okay, I would do that. We gotta go to a doctor. I'm like, shh, you gotta regulate you. I'm like, I'm, I, can, I can help you out. I can give you a she's formula. She's yelling at that me looks... from the other room. I can't very much hear. She knows that, and yet she's still gonna yell at me. <laughs> I can tell you that my uncle had a magic concoction for us kids when we were growing up. Thyroid. Yeah. And uh, you could mix this crap up, and you could drink it. And I'm not gonna lie, it was the most god awful crap you've ever <laughs> drank in your life. Why would I want to try that out? Like, no, oh, no, I want it's still good. Let, let me drink let, this magic thing. Let, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> But I promise you, within a couple of days, you will be you will be completely cleaned, and you will feel better. I'm gonna That's be skinny. <laughs> That's the only reason I ever went along with it. He called it jogging in the jug. Uh, I'll call you know it ass. I, he called it jogging in the jug because you was jogging from the jug through the toilet. <laughs> son, it cleaned you out. I don't remember the exact formula, but oh my god! And the thing is, he would always feel bad giving it to us. It sounds like hazing. So, it sounds right. like hazing. So, so, like in a couple of days, he did this once a summer, every summer. So two days after he gave it to us, he would treat us to like an, a homemade ice cream or sherbet party because like, he felt so horrible for doing it to us. Like if I ate that or drank that stuff, you're the way you're describing it, I would like you better make me skinny, bitch. I, <laughs> I better, Dude, I better I, pass so much. You might, might as well just call I, me a little, a little you, yogurt I, tube right now. Just squeeze it out of my butt. I, I swear to God, within two days, you're ten pounds down, bro. It's gone. It's it's gone. <laughs> Demon, be exercised. <laughs> <laughs> Your colon feels like Hercules at that point. Yeah. Oh, I can, I can break a more. But with my butt cheeks, I've been pushing so much this week. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, goodness gracious. That, uh, oh, gosh, uh, no. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, tell, tell your friend about the, the, the pizza. We, we'll, we'll get back to me on that one. I'll, I'll love to hear what people think about it. Um, kind of came up to me. Of course, my wife also had taco, um, taco pizza. That's a pretty popular one uh, at a local place near us. And we have a place called CC Pizza. It's what I... Wouldn't really recommend a CC Pizza if you have the options. It's not really like, oh my God, go to the CC Pizza. They're great. They were they make a lot of um a lot of quick pizzas, but they do have yep. dessert pizza, which I won't lie, I absolutely do, I love the dessert pizza. We don't go there no more for obvious reasons, but goodness gracious, their dessert pizza is great. I just it's just it's just a, a kid's little wonderland. Like, why are you gonna go CC Pizza? Their their pizza is not that good. Because of desserts. <laughs> That's it. Cinnamon yep. pizza, and they're, they even have, like, a macaroni pizza, and 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 I think they have, like, a um, French toast. I forget. Like, they have, like, several different versions of, of their, of their like, an apple pizza. It's pretty much just, like, apple pie, but on a pizza. Pretty good. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, people still pick at me about this, but I still say my absolute favorite pizza was the, the freaking octagon-shaped pizzas at school. Oh man, pizza you day! You remember this? Do, you remember do, do. The, they had they the had the, the freaking uh, cheeseburger pizzas? They were octagon shaped, and you, you, like at pizza day, it was like somebody's gonna catch a bow getting to that freaking cart to get that pizza. Oh yes, yeah. especially especially if you like you could talk someone out of their pizza, which I merely oh, yeah. did because some kids didn't like their pizza. I go like, hey, you don't want your pizza? Hey, hey, hey! I know you don't like it. Come on, come on, put it on the plate, and like. But the day, I don't know if your school did it, but mine did. The atrocity, the gall, they switched the pizza from the Oxagon to these regular slices of pizza, and the pepperoni on there would like eating just, there's, it, it was, it was deplorable. It was, it was just hell on earth. It was, it was never the same. The cheese on it was not fully melted. It didn't taste like cheese. Felt like it, like they tried to make some like you know goat milk cheese.
Uh, that would kind of suck because uh, there's no more VODs. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it looks like it's going again now. Um, I don't know what happened there. I mean, the, the funny thing was is the recording software was running perfectly fluidly. It was just Twitch that was frozen. Yeah, that's uh that's on that's on the, the internet side. But we'll 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 manage, we'll manage. Um so okay. Was the turbot school, since we're on that topic, that kinda does roll in quite well to your uh teacher that you told about the, the, your 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 yeah since <laughs> since we're talking about school i'm pretty sure that rolls right into that right for those who weren't here and you missed it and i did edited everything out here we we're talking about uh pizzas restaurant pizzas at uh cc's pizzas pizzas at school octagon pizzas amazing if, you, if you're a teacher bring that back the great and then uh and then now we're gonna go to that little story so start me it's off here so here we go. Who was she again? Um, what was the class again? She was, she was my literature teacher. She was responsible for, you know, teaching us the fine arts of Edgar Allan Poe and uh, Shakespeare and stuff stuff along those lines. She was, and, uh, she was the, uh, the not, not the choir, but she was pretty much the teacher to lead the plays in your school, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing. She was also the wife of the preacher of the largest church in town. The life so, of the wife. Yeah, the wife of the preacher <laughs> that ran the largest church in town. Now, here's the here's where it comes in at. Yeah. I, at a certain point in my life, due to the stories we've already talked about with my father, was very much one of those individuals that was a... a didn't really care what much pe- what what many people th- thought about me. Yeah. So I did not have a problem with wearing all black. And to this this lady, it was like the demon child. You wore all black. You're a demon. You got to be possessed. You know, demon. pick on me. Pick up, pick on me. It probably didn't hurt that I was wearing black trench coats with black jeans and black t-shirts and black boots. But you know. Hey, Long what can I say? Too. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was an angry individual. Oh, yeah. So uh, I would go into her class. Yeah. Uh, Grumpy, get your um, asthma medica- uh, medication now. <laughs> she, she, she said, get your asthma medication now. You might need it. So I always have it by myself, Southie. Like, it <laughs> we, doesn't lead my we, side. Uh, um, we're in class, and this lady has taught multiple generations of my family. Okay, okay. So not only, not only does she have this, he's wearing all black, he's long-haired, he's got a tattoo, he must wait, be... Wait, 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 you had a tattoo in high school? I had a, my first tattoo I got when I was 15. Is that legal? Yep, if your parents signs for it. I did not know that. Yeah. G.I. Joe, so, everyone I know. Holy crap. Yeah, so, so I'm in class, and uh, she's constantly berating me about the way I look, how I'm dressed, how it's not Christian, how I should be more loving to my fellow classmates and stuff. So I figure the best way to deal with this lady is she wants a demon. Be a demon. Wait, wait, wait. Is this a is this a Catholic school? No, no, no. This is not a Catholic school. She what? just that, she, she just had the happened goal to be to talk about yeah. Christianity in a school that was probably yeah. public. Yep, it was public, but back, it's a small now, town. It's a, it's a it's a small town, and it back then everybody went to this church. Yeah, but nowadays so, she would uh, be crucified. Yeah, so. Um, I, I, along with the girl I was dating at the time, who happened to be in the class, and a couple of family members and friends, decided she wants a demon, let's give her a demon. So I would come in, and she would go through this whole thing where she would call people to read passages, and I would do my best demon voice to read a passage like, Quote the raven. Wait, wait, wait. 
Y'all are still reading a Bible? Holy shit, small town. No, no, not a Bible. Not a Bible. We would be reading stuff like Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, I and... thought she was like, like read from verse John chapter no. 2. No. <laughs> I'm like, what the? No, no, she would come in and be like, okay, uh, somebody pick up on this spot in Poe's journal. And I would be like, <laughs> So, you're breaking you know, up here a little bit, but yeah, I, I get the idea. You're you're giving it a. So I'm I'm giving it the whole demon voice, and uh, she she pretty much tells me one day if I can't speak like a normal human being, I'm not to speak at all. So I'm like, okay, I'm not supposed to speak at all. Silence so, you. So la later on that evening. I get together with my little posse that's in the class. Okay. And the girl I was dating the girl I was dating at the time decided, hey, um, let's have some fun with her. You can't speak, right? But we can still speak. So we all go in dressed up like little demon cultists tomorrow and follow you in like your little puppy dogs, and then we talk in the demon voice. <laughs> so this woman is watching each day a different one more person each day slowly starts dressing black and talking like this and she's starting to get paranoid for real like she really thinks we have some kind of cult growing in her class and um it's, it's like going up to her start like you know idolizing and appraising her and like giving her tribute and it's like saying she's the reason why you're this way so, so like just sort of mess with her like hey no no you're no the reason they why were we're this way they were they were coming to me in her class. Oh, so it was and and she would be like, she would be like, Amber, read such and such passage. And she would look at me and say, My Lord, is it okay for me to read this passage in this class today? <laughs> so and she I'd was reach over. Get her your I'd reach, Yeah, I'd reach over and tap her on the forehead and said, Blessed be the dark one, or something <laughs> like that. Something along those lines. And the teachers was literally like starting to freak out. And then we decided, okay, we'll let it die back one day. And that one day she crossed the line and I went absolutely ape crap. So she, I come in, we were going to chill out that day. And she was just like, I can't take all these black clothes in my class anymore. If you can't wear normal clothes, don't come to my class anymore after today. If you do, I'm going to have you expelled for Worshipping Satan or something along those lines. I can't remember the exact words because it was many years ago. And I just turned and looked at her and said, Your soul is mine. <laughs> I, I kid you not, she put her book down. She walked out of the classroom, went to the front office, and turned in her letter of resignation. Oh, Pansy. Ah, oh, come on. Don't give up that easy, Miss Christianity, the holy than thou. It, and it was hilarious because I didn't know it, but my family had planned a a uh, a luncheon at their church hall <laughs> that following weekend. So I've already scared this woman half to death. She's turned in her letter of resignation. And then the following Saturday, I come rolling up in the churchyard, walking into her church hall in all my black clothes and wonder, like I always do. And she literally told her husband, you can't allow him in here. Oh, he is, man. He, 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 is, he is evil. He is the spawn of the devil. I mean, she was just going off. My uncle just turned and looked at me. He said, what did you do to this lady? I said, I just told her that her soul was mine. He's like, bad boy, I told you, souls belong to me. <laughs> at, that, at that point, at that point, no joke, our family was asked to leave the church hall. We couldn't have our luncheon there. That is okay, one that's 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 really hypocritical and really too like like you can't you can't take that stuff seriously from a kid. But at the same time, if she wanted to play it, I would have been like my wife as soon as I walked into the church. And I would act like I was catching a fire, like a flame, like, ah, 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 burning, and just fall to the floor. Cause, like, she's gonna play the game and, like, seriously, you can't take this shit too seriously. 
I'm all that belief. You know, we're not going to go there very far. But it's it, you can't take that. Even if, if I was, let's just say, even if I was, uh, how about you don't judge me and maybe try to help me rather than try to convict me from wearing black right. clothes. That's right. the most well, idiotic well, thing. <laughs> black clothes. Hindsight. Hindsight 2020. Had I known that that was where the luncheon was going to be that day, I did it. have some. I did. I did have some smoke bombs. I probably would have set off in my own pocket when I walked in the door, just to oh, look yeah, like just I was starting. Oh yeah, cut on fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I didn't know. So, um, it's just oh, uh, my if goodness. you know, miss literature teacher, I am sorry. I didn't mean to uh, run you away, but I was in a very bad place. Prime and example. You were just an outlet. I was wearing all black that day myself. I was at a funeral. Yeah. What is funerals normally done at? At a at a place of worship. <laughs> Am I going to hell for going to a funeral in all black? No, it's just a, 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 a thing of mourning. It's a thing of passing. Yeah, it's just a and and see that thing. is something that is something she never asked. She never asked why I wore the black. If she had, I'd give her an answer. I was wearing all black because I was still upset mourning. even years later after my dad passed away. I refused to wear anything else. Yeah, so, um, so I wasn't trying to go in there and be a disruption and be a demon child or anything, but she asked for it. and She brought out the old, wrath, and she deserved what she got. As the old saying goes, be careful what you ask for. Don't poke the bear. Um, so I had, a, I had a, a teacher like that. Well, not like that in a Christianity standpoint, but she was very much, she, she got a little too, too emotional about a lot of things. Um. I got two stories, really, about my school that I, I still remember to this day, and I was like, what the freak? Okay, so one of my stories were, uh, goes about, like, okay, I was very much a drawing. I drew a lot back in my day, and most schools always had those pencil sharpeners where you spin them, right? You remember those things? You spin them, and yeah, then you do hand cranks. Ro rotating blade things that just sucked. Like, yep. no matter what you did, they just, like, they never come out sharp, and if they did... Always dull. They would like it. They would be dull, or it would last for like a, um, a week or two, and then after that, it would never work again for whatever reasons. Like someone would break it, or the blades would get so dull from all the wood. I don't know. So I got fed up and went, okay. So what I'm gonna start doing? I took a blade, not a razor blade, mind you, mind you, a blade from one of my hand pencil things that broke on me. I just took the blade out, and what I would do, I would just whittle away the the the, the pencil tip. To draw. Now, I've done this for, at this point when all this went down. I'll get to the point where I went down to. Um, I've been doing this for like three, four days, maybe a whole week or so. I wasn't, I, I, I was getting, I was still bullied in that school, but I wasn't like getting to the bully like I, you know, once were back in junior high and prior to that. Um, so I wasn't a very emotional kid, but I was very much a kid that was very much interacting with his drawings. I draw, I was sharpen my pencil with this blade, and I would put it away. And I would start to draw. It was very obvious what I was doing. I had to see for a while. And one day I go to one of my um, my study halls because I was, you know, I have dyslexia and they need me a place to help me to read the books and help me be able to pass class, which you know me if I got reading things, I had not a big of a problem. So I would go in there and one day my uh, recently new study hall teacher, she was actually like, she was quite attractive. I don't ever like a big thing for she, but she was way too pretty to be a teacher. But I never like tried anything with her, and I was sharpening my pencil after like the, the the fifth or sixth day of doing this in the study hall. She's seen me do it before. She's been having me in class for at least uh, a couple months now, so she knows what kind of kid I am. She goes and asks me, "What is that?" I'm like, I, "I'm it's a little blade. I'm sharpening on my pencil." It's like you're not supposed to have that here. I'm like, "It came from a pencil sharpener." I'm sharpening my pencil. It's like you don't have a pencil sharpener. This is my pencil sharpener. It's broke. I just took the blade from it and shrapped my pencil with it. And he's like, you're not supposed to have that. She literally wrote me up and had me have to every, every uh, day for, I would say, two months or so, come to her class or her, her, her classroom during the uh, break to put me in disp uh, the detention during every single break for two months, all because I used a blade not like a knife blade, mind you. This is a little pencil sharpener's blade, which happened on every single pencil sharpener. Took it off and used it as a sharpening tool of my pencils. And that was, she said it was a daily weapon. And a principal agreed with her. I'm like, 
what the fuck? What am I going to do? Cut myself? It's obvious I don't cut myself because, well, I'm RTC and uh, our sleeves are very short. And you can see my wrist clearly and my legs. I would, uh, 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 I would always walk around shorts even during the wintertime because I was hairy. No, duh. And <laughs> what am I going to do? Somebody else go cut their throat? You think you would, like, you would see me do it. But one thing, I would, if I would have done it, I would have done it already. So I was, I was quite... Um, Quite perturbed on that, and of course, as the teacher, she was getting over dramatic, thinking I was gonna go out the schoolyard and start shanking everybody with this little cute, like a uh, maybe an inch blade, uh, one sided, mind you, <laughs> and go, go, you know, go all, you know, bender, uh, stabby guy. Ha ha! Ha ha! So I stabbed everybody. No, it's like, why are you freaking out? It's just. <laughs> So I was, I was so, oh. like, I was so confused about that, and everybody knew I wasn't very much a, a bad kid. So like that, though, was that the whole thing? And then I had, I had my uh, little acting teacher to get back to that little thing. Um, she had us read some Edgar Allan Poe thing, and there was this one play. I don't know if you ever read it yourself. It was about the protuberance of a nose. I don't know if you remember that actor that had the little play about how big his nose were. And yes, had... I do. Okay. I, I, I know the play. Okay, so. My teacher for one of our exams or one of our things uh, was to go to front of the class and act out this thing. Now, everybody knows I wasn't very good at reading, but as soon as someone helped me read it, I would get it very easily. So I went up to the front of the stage in front of the class. Like, I, badly enough that it is, I had, like, three of the most popular girls in my school in that class, two of the football players, some of the top football players, and a couple over, I know, no, none of my friends were in that class. Not a single one of my friends was in that class. And she had me read out that script, that, that play in my Petrubus of a Nose. The moment I stopped, the teacher came up to me and asked me to join her play. A moment I stopped, I'm like, no. <laughs> no. It's like, come on, you're good at it. I'm like, you know how hard it took me to read this thing? You have no idea how hard and how long it took me to read this thing. And you want me to join your play? Are you crazy? You make me do this in front of the, the, the hottest girls in my school, some of the biggest dicks in my in the football team, and not a single friend here to back me up here, and you want me to join your play? No. Uh-uh. I sat back down. I I I shut up and everybody was just everybody was just standing at me, just looking at me like, what the hell did he just do? I was I got into it. I I I'm I can't say I'm an actor, but I damn well, like, I know how to play it off. And then this teacher just made me do this in front of everybody. Now, everybody else was up there. They were, like, read, literally reading from the book, exactly right off the book, and just, like, oh, my protuberance of a nose. Oh, look how big it is. And they did get two shits. And me, I'm, like, up there, like, playing if I was the guy, not even look at the book, and just, like, went off by memory. I didn't like that. Teachers put me in that awkward position. But you best believe if I would have joined her play, it would have been amazing. But I wouldn't be able to read shit. <laughs> That's why they make books on audio, Bubba. Oh, not back then. If they did, they were expensive. Hell, buying the... Uh, we had the Harry Potter books on D, on um, CD. I, I'm pretty sure you maybe seen them. You know how expensive those things are? Brand new? Yeah. Huh. We got them used. And I still almost broke my, broke my leg to get them. Goodness gracious, CD the freaking turnover disc wouldn't been no better. But yeah, I would have I would have been pretty good. But just uh, goodness gracious, that's what something I've always said. If I could ever if I could ever get over my dyslexia, I'm pretty sure I would be a dang good voice actor. Just not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's nice to have those to have to know you could do something if you just didn't have that one thing. Oh uh, yeah, I know. It's just like this with this one thing wouldn't stop me. People are like, why did like why are you letting it stop you? Cause it's a pretty big thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. being a football player with no let with only one leg. It's like, why are you letting that stop you? It's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I kind of need both to do one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about though, man. But speaking of one of one leg, we well. These well know um, my wife's grandmother uh, passed away yesterday. 
the funeral was today. That was that was fun. And she was actually she had one of her legs amputated. And one of the little kids, uh, after she passed away, and he went up to one of the the, the moms or one of the uh, one of the aunts and said, "Nanny has both her legs now," because she's passed away and she yeah. lost one of her legs, and now she's yeah now she has both her legs now. So I'm like, that is that is really sentimentally sweet, like really yes, sweet. It, it's amazing. It's amazing how. Uh, how kids perceive some things and can make you take a moment that makes you feel really low and suddenly feel really good. Like, should I be laughing? Because, <laughs> yeah, just, I don't, dude, man, let me tell you something. At some of our funerals, my family doesn't do the whole, um, I'm, I'm down and out type thing. Like we, some of my family members literally are like for my funeral, you're throwing a freaking party and everybody's telling the, the biggest stupidest stories about the dumbest crap they ever see me do because i want y'all laughing when you leave mm -hmm. not crying you know and that's that we do that for a lot of them you know i'm hoping when that when and if i go you know uh they're gonna be partying hard son it's very very sobering to know that idea if your family could do that i don't, I don't know how my family would, would react i i don't even know how i'm dealing with it when i do go but i don't want to think about that Death is something that I try to, and I'm sure everybody really doesn't really, like, we have to think about it at some point, but we much rather not. And that's just one of those things that's just like, i much rather not right now. I know it's going to happen. Just love those while you can. Love them while they're here. Don't, don't worry about when they're gone. Just love them while they're here. Um, but let's we'll go ahead. We're, we're at that, that mark now. And as always, you want to plug something before we go? Yeah, hey, guys. Um... Y'all, uh, y'all keep tuned in. Keep keep an eye on the podcast. Listen to us uh, if you feel up to it. I mean, we got some funny stuff. We got some stuff that'll break your heart. Yeah, listen to us now. You hear? You hear? Yeah, yeah, you hear? Yeah, yeah, we hear. But uh, we're gonna get yeah. you. Don't listen to us. And when y'all get a chance, as always, y'all jump in and watch uh, watch Grumpy with his streams. Watch uh, Jasmine with her streams. Stealth Elf Jade. And uh, y'all be safe out there during the holidays. You yes. know, you know how that traffic is, man. Be, be careful your 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 where you're you're going to, and um, careful in the eyes. There's a lot of cops on the street right now. A lot. Holy goodness gracious! I've saw more cops today than I've probably saw in the last five or six months. I'm not even joking. Um, and as always, you can come to my channel at Grumpy Bear at Twitch.tv forward slash Grumpy Bear. Or here right now, if you're from the YouTube channel, this is on twitch.tv forward slash bear thought. And of course, if you're coming for you're here on Twitch, you want to go to my YouTube channel, it's uh Grumpy B Gaming. Be sure to look specifically for Grumpy B Gaming. Um in the search menu, they give me an option to look specifically for that name. Be sure to do that. Be keeping your eyes on my your YouTube channel. And of course, as always, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Help us out. Leave a comment. Please leave a comment. Anything to help out the algorithm because YouTube is uh, required on that stuff. I wish it wasn't a requirement, but only way to get it, get, let us be shown a little bit more in people's uh, feed or, you know, trending or, uh, you know, other things like that is to do that kind of stuff. I know it's not something you personally would, you know, take the time and bother, but you would be so kind to help us out. And, of course, word of mouth. Nothing beats the word, of word of mouth even to this day. Um, so let's go ahead and end it. We didn't get very hey, much. One more thing, guys. One more thing, guys. Just in case, just in case y'all aren't catching this. Um, if y'all have a movie, an anime, a book, something like that that you guys want to discuss, even if we're in the middle of convo, feel free to drop it in chat. We're we're good with rolling to topics that you guys want to talk about too. But you got to let us know. Okay. We don't know. Got to be during the live stream to do that. Yeah, be during the live yeah. stream to do that. Don't be during yeah. the, uh, well, if you leave in the comments, I'll read it. But I may forget about it by the time we stream again. So I'm not like I'm making a list here, checking it twice, which, you know, Merry Christmas for those who are coming upon that. Be careful on Black Friday. And I think Black Friday is next week, right? Am I wrong? It's after Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Uh Black Friday is the Friday after Thanksgiving, isn't it? And that's Thanksgiving is Thursday, so it would be this Friday. This Friday. So, yeah, Black Friday will already be over. So be safe during Black Friday. Don't go out there in large crowds. Don't hug everybody. Don't go. It's mostly wash your hands, the cough, 
cough. He doesn't really help you out that much, but you know, it's a it's a mental thing just to feel comfortable. Don't get close to people. And uh, as always, you know how it goes, anime. South thing everybody else. You have a good day. You have a good night. Have a good life. Much love, y'all. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>